Camp Curiosity, presented by Timkin, is back for winter break. Book your kids some fun IRL and get them down to Great Lakes Science Center. New camp themes for the season offer fun challenges and unforgettable science adventures for kids in grades K through 6. And while you're planning your family's holiday activities, don't miss the Science Center's new special exhibit. Build it. Engineering ideas brick by brick. It's the perfect playground to construct your wildest ideas. Learn more at greatscience.com. Yeah, but he's like, all right, well, I'll play along with giving this man half of my company for now. For now. For now. <laughs> but yeah, a contract that says until I count to 100. I mean, to be fair, you and Heath kind of did that with me, so I don't know no, how much okay, you yeah, no. judge. You should have given you a physical and a blood test like the <laughs> You should have. <laughs> it's mostly syrup. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian Cinema because the governor hasn't called yet. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. God bless us, everyone. Merry <laughs> fucking Christmas <laughs> to us. Starting this christmas tagular a little late this time, but we are starting it. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? christmas tagular. Christmas tacular. Fuck yeah. Abridged Christmas tacular. Sorry, too many shitty movies came out at just that moment. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Mr. Scrooge to see you with an exclamation. So like to see you or something like that. <laughs> it's the story of a Christmas carol by Dickens, sort of. It's it's that minus the story of that mm -hmm. story plus time machine cheese and incest is what I remember. Yep. You're making it sound way better than it I is. I was going right? to say that's a way better pitch than we actually it's enjoy. It's the worst possible time machine cheese incest movie you could possibly make. They did. Yeah. yeah somehow no. bad versions of all those things. Somehow. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved your church's production of A Christmas Carol so much that you just had to make those actors improvise a sequel at gunpoint, you will love <laughs> this movie. <laughs> also, you made this movie. Probably. probably. Yeah, probably. So, yeah, because this movie was born when 21st century authors looked at a 19th century morality play and said, if only it were more heavy handed, right? It's too a little too subtle. subtle. Yeah. <laughs> too subtle, this movie. So is there anything you just want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst. What to get excited about if you happen to time travel into the future from the mid 1800s to. Okay. Now. Okay. Absolutely. And that yeah. happens in the movie. And the character who does that gets way too excited about the dumbest things. It takes like most of the movie before they finally realize something from the future that would be weird and exciting, like electricity. Any electronic would have been good. Yeah. But they go with like, Ketchup and mm -hmm. tea. It's so stupid. And at one point, hot dogs, which existed back in his fucking time. Already existed. Yeah. yeah. Already existed. Real problem there. Now, I, I will say, Heath, I don't know if I can go there because what was the movie we watched where the guy came back, like came into the future and spent all his time lecturing people about how mannequins were going to make little boys whack off? Hmm. That, that we, I, feel, I feel like we've seen better worst, but yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah. I'm going to go with best worst long form names. Ooh. For, yeah, for some reason in this movie, everybody had the full on three syllable version of like, like Timothy, not Tim, Ronald, not Ron, Matthew, not Matt. It's like we were an effeminate bad guy in an 80s movie. Hello, yeah. Timothy. Definitely. And Heath already teased this one, but I'm going to go with best worst long tail marketing to Heath in your movie. Well, we'll talk about it. When you <laughs> oh, talk okay. About it. We'll talk yep, about yep, it. Yep. 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 They I don't get it. do it right, though. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they never consummate it. All right. Well, I have to check and make sure that Bah humbugging a Scrooge movie won't create a singularity. So we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back in a minute with all the bad community theater that is Mr. Scrooge to see you. Hey, Grandma, just wanted to say happy Hanukkah, happy birthday, New Year. Bye. What do you mean, who is this? I don't have the time for this. Hey, Eli, what you doing? 
Yeah, we heard you yelling from downstairs. Did you remember that Firefly is canceled again? No, no, though I am still mad about that. No, I'm, I'm trying to make all my Christmas calls, but with my plan with Big Wireless, it's costing me a fortune. Well, why don't you switch to Mint Mobile? What's Mint Mobile? Give yourself the gift of insane savings this holiday season with Mint Mobile's best wireless deal of the year. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you'll get another three months for free. That's six months of premium wireless service for the price of three. Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home while saving tons on phone calls starting at just $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. Seriously, I can't think of a better gift than turning an overpriced wireless bill into just $15 a month with Mint Mobile. I don't know, Noah. I don't want to have to change phones. And I love to talk and text. Well, with Mint Mobile, all plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Plus, you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly with eSIM. Wow, that does sound good. Where do I get that deal again? For a limited time only, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months free by going to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's Mint mobile.com slash gam new customers only additional taxes fees and restrictions apply see mint mobile for details all right guys i'm in <laughs> if only you guys had come upstairs before i called my uncle steve with my condolences slash birthday wishes feels like those don't go well together yeah they did not heath they did not mm -hmm. and when you were like whoa i almost lost whoa, it oh <laughs> yeah dude thank you thank you Okay, okay, everyone settle down. First of all, congratulations on an amazing run of the New Baptist First Communion production of A Christmas Carol. Heck yeah! Ooh. But you, you know, guys, I've been thinking, I love A Christmas Carol and everything, but couldn't this story be a little more Christian? More Christian? I mean, yeah, you know, it's about a heavily Jewish-coded guy who is visited by a triune spirit and... They save his soul. But, but but what if that's too subtle? Yeah, it is a little vague. Right, right, yeah. And, and you know how sequels to classic literature and stories are always amazing? Obviously. Aaron Bud too, of course. Yeah, well, what if we made a sequel to A Christmas Carol that was just much, much more obviously about Jesus? Yeah, plus we already have the costumes. Yeah. We could use my mom's real estate office, too amazing. Guys, we're going to write the Christmas Carol movie that Christians have been hoping for. And incest in it. Yes, it will also include some incest. It will, though. Nice. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Toy train, no. Moon boots, <laughs> lame. Hey, Santa, what are you looking for? Oh, hello there, Twinkle Toes. I'm just trying to find a proper gift for all my atheist friends for Christmas. Oh, that's tricky. Well, why don't you get them tickets to God Awful Movies live in Orlando, Florida on March 2nd? Wait, God Awful Movies is doing a live show in Orlando, Florida on March 2nd? They sure are. And as of this recording, there are still Platinum Night and VIP meet and greet tickets available. Oh boy, I bet their Southern listeners are excited. Everyone's excited. Get your tickets at godawfulmovieslive.com or check the show notes for this episode. Thanks, Twinkle Toes. Now to figure out what to get my Jewish friends. I didn't know you had Jewish friends. Sure, who do you think does our marketing? Oh, man, that's problematic. You are. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with a logo for Salty Earth Pictures. I feel like they don't <laughs> know what name. salt the earth. They <laughs> definitely thought, like, salt of the earth. Yes. Can you believe no one's taken salt of the earth pictures? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what they're saying is this movie will ruin the art of cinema for all that's come after. <laughs> yeah. By accident, because yeah. they're stupid. And can I say, nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> nailed no, it. They, that they, was the intention. They got as close as they could. I kind of am okay with there being no movies because this movie was made. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we get this, uh, we get the credits, we get this theme. So they, the credits are like they're stalling, right? Like they are embarrassed to show us the movie and they're hoping we'll leave. Can we just get an act of Congress? Credits are at the end. Uh, right. That's just yes. put them at the end. This is what we did at World War II. This was part of the Accords. We all, we created the UN and credits go at the end of the you movie. You would have thought, yeah. Politics is too polarized. This is the problem. This is what this happens. This is what we can unite around. Absolutely. <laughs> so, okay. So we, we cut to, it's London. It's 1844. 
don't let the blinking red light on the side of that building fool you. It's definitely 1844. <laughs> NFC security access on their buildings in 1844. I mean, there's going to be time travel. So I guess there's uh, some people going back. Putting sure, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> This movie is a wild combination of like school play sets, actual locations that their grandma said they could use, and like the backstage at the local high school. It's a real weird mix <laughs> of product integrity here. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. And defects, right? So because this is where the ghost of Jacob Marley rises up in just a, <laughs> like effects straight out of night trap. Fuck yeah. And he's like, hello there. Everybody, please ignore that blinking red light next to me. <laughs> I'm going to do a ghost lesson now to, to that guy Scrooge again, because it's a year later. Yes. This movie feels like, and I want to be very clear, I don't mean the actor. I mean, Jacob Marley, the character, called his agent in a huff after Christmas and was like, you said I'd be a fucking featured player. I'm there in the beginning and I'm not there. And they were like, don't worry, J Jacob. Jacob, they're doing a sequel and you're going to be really, you're going to get to go wild in this one because it really feels like he's like, hey, everyone, you're probably looking for a lot more information on old Jake Marley. Well, don't worry, because I'll be your hostess with the ghostess for this one. <laughs> hey, I get Silver to play with bells. my chains during the movie. Silver bells. Where's the piano? You know, a lot of chain work. A lot of chain work. All okay. the chain work you want. A lot of chain work. Okay, that's a weird move by God. Apparently, it's like, all right, what should we do with ghosts in purgatory? Ah, vague metaphor prop that represents <laughs> why they're in purgatory? Really? Vaguely, though? It's got to be hard to pee. My favorite version of, the, of this is the, the old-timey Christmas Carol where he's in hell, but he also has chains, which feels weird, right? Like he's burning in eternal fire and also a little heavy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I like that the chains jingle when Jacob Marley, the ghost, zoops in and out of places. And it's like magic ghost enter, but also like clink, 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 clink. Yeah, like, <laughs> like when you put a bell on your cat. Yeah. So, and also one of my, my first notes on this was that words could not describe how poorly mic'd it is unless they were as poorly mic'd. But apparently that was on purpose. They actually have good microphones. This was an echo thing they were doing because this is a dream sequence. Or a ghost voice. Well, thing. it's, it's yeah. a ghost dream thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and then in the ghost dream thing, Ebenezer comes across a door with a sign hanging on it that says, Come in and know me better. And this sign was like clearly printed on Ye Oldie Hewlett Packard printer. Yeah. It has the Ye Old Dot Matrix rip signs yeah. on it. <laughs> So, oh, so the door isn't attached to anything. That's how we know we're in a dream, right? Mm, yeah. He tries to open the door and then the ghost of Jacob Marley offers him some keys. But before he can grab him, he wakes up. And he does like a, huh, just a dream. And can I just say, if you're visited by three ghosts and that changes your life, you're probably not like, eh, it was probably nothing when you get visited by the fourth ghost, right? Right. Like at this point. If you're still dismissing ghosts, it's like dementia rather than <laughs> skepticism. So it, the Scrooge runs out of the room for his morning ablutions. And Marley, the, the ghost Marley, rises up through the floor and does a little like last time on exposition. Yeah, he's doing fucking flavor. And he's also adding shit. He's like, hi, I'm Jacob Marley. You're probably wondering, what was my favorite ice cream? Well, I'm <laughs> glad you asked. I'm a rocky... Oh, no, I need to... Nobody asked that. Okay. Well, I'll just tell the fucking story of Christmas Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Pieces of shit. <laughs> so, and I also want to point out that, like, at this point, we were six minutes in, I got my second auto ad. And I'm like, Eli's making me watch this to try to normalize Dear Old Dad. I, I just know. want you to give Dear Old Dads a try. And I feel <laughs> like if I show you a movie with ads every 10 seconds, you'll list a one that has 20 seconds. Right, right. So Scrooge comes back in post-ablutions. He's so excited as all hell about Christmas. Marley's still monologuing on us. There's a part here where he raises his finger and a purple light moves the toy boat on the mantle. Okay, so Jacob Marley, post Scrooge's salvation, Jacob Marley is now Scrooge's bitchy roommate? 
I guess. <laughs> just fucking labeling the food in the fridge. Jacob, do not eat. And it's like, we're the only two people who live here, man. If you don't want me to eat your food, just say it. Seriously, <laughs> Jacob needs to get visited by like the ghost of passive aggressive future past and present to like teach him a lesson. <laughs> I literally wrote in my notes, Jacob Marley has been resigned to the position of Ebenezer Scrooge's naggy 1950s housewife. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so he's doing his bits. He's doing a lot of shtick, right? He's like, uh, Ebenezer starts singing and he goes, oh, his singing is bad enough to raise the dead. No pun intended. I'm like, yeah, no pun achieved, man. That's There's no <laughs> pun there. You're just... Because I'm dead. If you think about it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I kind of empathize with Jacob Marley here because if I was a ghost set with one very specific exposition power and 365 days later, I'm still <laughs> fucking hanging around being like, I don't know what to tell you, man. I We did it. We did it. Mission accomplished, <laughs> right, everybody. Right. Yeah, what? I'm, is, should I try jumping upwards? Do I need to jump? <laughs> So, yeah, so then we, we cut 169 years later to New Britain, Wisconsin. When I saw the cars driving through the snow, I thought, I thought another ad had started. But no, <laughs> this to the story is told in multiple centuries. And we're going to open up on a bunch of unhoused people eating at a diner. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell that they weren't just Wisconsinites because, you know, they had a lot of coats on and stuff. But right, exactly. Yeah. And at one point, she's explaining that they're the Bible Club. Later, she's going to call them the Bridge Club. I'm glad that you clarified because I spent this entire scene trying to figure out who these people were and why they don't have to pay for their food. Right. Yeah. So we're going to meet our main character, Belle. She is the owner of Belle's di or the dinner bell. Very clever. And uh, she gives away free food to all of the homeless people nearby and is going out of business because of that, right? That's what we're establishing with this scene. And look, I think that's a great thing for anyone who owns a food establishment to be doing, but, but I don't think they need to bring their shopping carts full of shit into your restaurant. I think you could, you know, get a bike rack or something, couldn't you? Well, right. So, so we also, we meet Petra here, who is the eclectic diner worker. Sometimes she's Sassy a Mexican. server, sometimes she's a, a cook. She, she wears a lot of hats. Right. Yeah, but mostly she provides a Spanish accent, which everyone else in Wisconsin was pretty sure was hilarious all by itself. I guess this actor was like, I'm Filipina. It's fine. Whatever. Yes. A hundred percent. All the other actors were like, oh, man, you're so funny. And she was like, I just said the line. I say, I don't want them here. Yeah. And they were like, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you kill me. You kill me. <laughs> Yeah, but Petra's like, uh, well, you know, maybe we should like kick them out and uh, be, since they're scaring off all the paying customers. And she's like, no, Matthew 25, motherfucker, religious movie. Right. So and then the very next thing is like, oh, and Petra, I'm really sorry. I haven't paid you in like four months. Yes. It's because I'm an idiot because of the Bible and I don't make any money and it's a crime now that I'm doing to you. But, <laughs> you know, Matthew 25 or whatever. Right. So I would literally stab you in the heart and sell your organs on the black market for pay. Well, and then also it like deflates the whole charitability thing to begin with because she's just robbing Petra to give these people food. Right. You can't enslave one person to feed the poor. That's deaf. I mean, look, it sounds like it would be in Matthew, but it's definitely not in Matthew. <laughs> it's a weird trolley thing that apparently yeah. the Bible has no dilemma with. But still, yeah, bad. No, yeah. can't do that. So as they're having this conversation, two guys walk in brushing non-existent snow off their shoulders for like 45 seconds. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, they're brushing sh their shoulders because I assure you there was snow outside. Yes. Right, right. So, yeah, so, but they want to, we, we overhear their conversation. They want to buy this diner and turn it into condos, multiple condos, this diner. <laughs> so you know, look, tough. I've lived in some New York City apartments, so I'm not okay, saying yeah. a corner of a diner wouldn't make up a condo. No, that's like seven <laughs> units we're looking at. Yeah, right. right. That's okay. a lot. Yeah, no, that's right. Well, we, we do establish uh, here and there that New Britain, Wisconsin is quite the metropolis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should see our theater <laughs> district. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but Belle looks over, sees these two guys, and she's like, oh, my God, that's Tim. We almost dated in high school. Belle, Belle, bring it in. <laughs> in. Ma'am, 
Ma'am, may I call you ma'am? You did not go to high school with these young men unless you were their teacher. Right. And I mean, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, that plot point would be less problematic than where we're going to land, just for the record. Yes. yes. Yeah. She, exactly. She's a solid 12 years older than these two guys. Yeah. Maybe babysat those guys. She is. Yeah. And look, she's much more attractive. So I think they all sat around and they were like, well, and you can be in high school. And she was like, I'm slight. I'm, we're in Wisconsin. I'm old enough to be their mom. And they were like, no, that's true. You are 12 years older, <laughs> but you're so much hotter. There's a cool Dawson's Creek plot about that, right? What I think that? you're allowed to be their age. So <laughs> went over well. Yeah. But she tells Petra, she, she didn't go out with him in high school because her dad forbade it and then she goes over to like wish him a merry christmas and get their order tim doesn't look up he does that dumb like i can't notice you yet for the script to work thing where he's like what's so merry about it christmas is all shit bah humbug and <laughs> and then he looks up he's sitting facing the other direction in a different booth at first yeah <laughs> like he's a spy so yeah. dumb and, and th this is the first of many times that they will have this character say the exact words that Ebenezer Scrooge says in A Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. And what I was not clear about is, is this a world in which A Christmas Carol is a historical event? Is this a world in which it's A Christmas Carol is a historical event and a Charles Dickens story? <laughs> or, weirdest of all, is this a world in which it is just a Charles Dickens story, but when it turns out to be reality, nobody's particularly miffed by it? Yeah, I feel like it's got to be A, but once or twice it slips into B. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, anyway, we have the, oh, we knew each other in high school moment. She goes back to get him coffee, and then he explains to his assistant, Ronald, that's the other guy, that he almost dated her in, in school, but his dad forbade it, right? He says, he says, actually, he's like, and that's good because, you know, you don't want to mix the classes. Okay, movie. I think this might be a great movie. <laughs> All right. I'm listening. Also, we, we should point out that the, the, the table full of homeless people are um, really on her ass about how long their free meal is taking. Yeah, at one point, the lady screams, hurry up with my food. And I wrote in my notes, I have a modest proposal for how to solve this problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a popular thing at a lot of restaurants, that proposal, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So she comes back. She goes to give them their coffee. And this is where Tim explains that her restaurant is loaded with debt. And he now owns her mortgage. There's this incredibly lazily written line where she's like, yeah, I'm behind on my mortgage, but I've been working with Mr. Brown at the Main Street Bank. <laughs> what? You mean like working to make money because you're like eight months behind on payment? No, no. I'm, I just talked to him about how I'm eight months behind on mortgage payments. That's what she means. Yep. They should foreclose on this stupid diner that makes no money. For sure. Yes. Again, like some movies get this right, right? Which is not. There's a thing that I bought, which is a house, and there's a structure for buying houses and buildings. And when you don't pay it, that's like stealing said thing. But you're supposed to make the old man McAgley be like, I'm selling your mortgage to big, you know, murder puppy or whatever. You can't just be like, no, turns out you can't have this restaurant for free. Right. Right. No, she's eight months behind on the mortgage. She hasn't paid her server in four months. This is one of those instances where it's like, yeah, the... The invisible hand should strangle this fucking business. This makes Seems sense like everything in this working moment. Out. Yeah. yeah. But he explains that she has until December 25th to pay up or they'll foreclose. Which is weird because I feel like when you're eight months behind on the mortgage, you don't need an additional 10 days of notice <laughs> yes, to right, foreclose. Right. They like to do big, you know, impactful, magical dates. Right. You know what I mean? You gotta yeah, make sure. That is day. something banks you know, like to just, do. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. If you sure. if you go up on your mortgage in January, they are fucked until like March. It really sucks. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to do it on Valentine's Day. It really, <laughs> it really <laughs> fucks with their business. So, yeah, so Belle goes to the counter and she tells Petra about the inciting incident there. And Petra goes to, we should murder him even quicker than Eli would. Fuck yeah, she does. Fuck yeah, she does. She's like, immediately, she's like, so rat poison in the coffee? And I'm like, fuck immediately. yeah, Immediately. <laughs> and she's like, hey, not a murder solution. And she's like, diarrhea medicine. And she's like, you have too many crimes as your first option. And so fast, each time, before I'm done with the question, rat poison. Like, you had it? 
<laughs> ready? I like Petra. Well, Petra I like her, rat poison. I like her initiative, but just take the unemployment and find any other job that pays you, maybe. Uh, but yeah, when the pays you money would be great and has customers. You can also kill this guy, but like separately. I don't like yeah, him either. Yeah, do it for a different reason. Also, Bell says he's so rude. And I mean, look, maybe it's just because this guy is an absolutely terrible actor. But the thing he has said is, hello, I own this building. You haven't paid your mortgage. Yes. Right. And you have to do that now. Yeah, but he he bumps into the, the bell on, on the wall. So he's... <laughs> A bad guy or something. Right. Yeah. So unclear. He's, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. But right. So he comes up to pay for the coffee and she says, you know what? It's on the house. And he's like, all right, but giving away free coffee is the whole fucking reason you can't pay your mortgage. And I'm like, you're being an asshole. But no, that is You are correct. That is the problem. Yeah. The giving away free food at your food restaurant is the problem. Yes. Like he's not wrong. <laughs> uh, and we should point out here that Ronald, his, his assistant, the other character's name is Tim. Ronald is trying to be nice the whole time. But Tim won't let him. I, I just want to point that out because it never amounts to anything or matters in any way in the fucking story. Ronald will walk into the final scene of this movie and I every one of our notes are like, who the fuck's that? Yeah. Oh, it's Ronald <laughs> right. from the first man of the movie. And then she turns to Petra and she says, remember when you said things couldn't get worse? Well, they just did. Except she didn't. So that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> So then we, we cut back to Scrooge. He's waiting. He's excitedly waiting for Bob Cratchit to get to work so he can give him his Christmas present, right? And he's doing the stupid fucking I'm going to fire you prank again. Like we saw you do it in, in my head in the re intervening year. Scrooge has just done this same stupid I'm destroying you and your livelihood prank every time he has something <laughs> nice to say to Bob. Just like, mm, Bob, I'm going to murder you with this knife. Just... Say what you yeah. want to say, Ebenezer. Yeah, he's pretending he's still miserly Scrooge and everything. And I I know this is a weird thing to say when Eli's right here, but he's way too committed to this bit. It goes on yep. for so long and he's so abusive to him and shit the whole time. No, I'm glad you said it, Noah, because I was literally, as I was making jokes about it just now, I was like, oh, it's like what I do to Heath on a pretty regular <laughs> basis. Okay, it's all coming together. The bit goes on until there's crying. That's yeah. what, what, what's on <laughs> on the whiteboard until he finds love yeah so he finally he's like it's no longer suitable for you to remain under my employ but that's actually his way of saying that he's making bob a partner ah in the busy won't be classic jape in his employ anymore you thought you and your canonically very sick son were destitute but actually now you have a, a partnership. Yep. Guys, we should do this with our bookkeeper. We should just call Julie on Christmas and be like, you're on the podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> you think she'd be down? I bet she'd be down. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. So yeah, no, if I'm Bob, I'm just fucking selling this business, my half of this business and getting out from under this belligerent asshole once and for all. But so yeah, they talk about how awful Scrooge used to be for a little while. Uh, but then we established that Scrooge covered the cost of Tiny Tim's life-saving operation. Yeah, and it it made him like able to walk without a crutch. Now. What the fuck is it, it? He got a ricketsectomy, a polioectomy right. in 1844? Yeah, unclear. It's 1844. They, they, they would have cocained his humors. What the fuck are you talking about? Life-saving operation. I was going to say, English operations at this time were not Great in the success yes. department. If this was a realistic movie, he'd be like, hey, I'm really sorry. I paid for Tiny Tim's operation. That guy was a dentist, it turned out. And he just <laughs> he was a barber. sawed your kid in half and then said, the devil is gone. So I don't know. <laughs> That's on me. <laughs> but yeah, this, we, we established that. And then just in case that was too subtle, Bob gives Mr. Scrooge a present from Tiny Tim and it's his old crutch that he doesn't need anymore because it's operation. And the note says, everyone needs a crutch. Thanks for being mine. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Don't worry. That's going to come back and it'll be even sillier when it does. So yeah, but Scrooge is like, but you're a, a full partner now. We'll put your name on the sign and Cratch is like, well, you know, wouldn't wouldn't Jacob Marley, whose name is already on the sign, be upset? And he's like, no, I'm sure that Jacob Marley, who's a ghost that I've met personally and still hangs out at my house, won't mind this at all if we take his name off the sign. And and then just the, the door blows open or 
a flash cut to Marley like crying in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> don't let him ruin this for us, Bob. Don't let this ruin. Just don't pay attention to him. He's got to leave eventually. It's been a calendar year. <laughs> So yeah, so but Scrooge's first act says his first act as partner should be to take the rest of the day off and spend it with his family, right? So he sends Bob away, and then he's like, aha, now I have time to buy my presents for the Cratchits. He says, I thought he would never leave, and I wrote in my notes, I'm going to fuck the shit out of that crunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it felt like was going to happen, Thank right? Thank you, Heath. Something, supportive. Something weird. Something he was going to go, not, except he was going to, Maybe he was going to go full salt he was burn on that crotch. Fuck the holes in the chains of Jacob. Like something sexual was going to happen for sure. Thank you. Yes, but no, instead he's going Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve. You fucking idiot. You're going to end up getting everybody pine scented mirror danglies from the gas station. You fucking idiot. New yeah. fucking Christmas Eve. So, okay. So Scrooge goes outside. He goes to lock up his shop. And damn, if he isn't suddenly bamfed to 2013 Wisconsin. Okay, look, I, we have so much movie to cover. I just have to talk about this non-moment that happens. As he's locking up, he says, Merry Christmas, Mr. O'Shaughnessy. And me trying to get Heath to punch me in the face is like, and a Merry Christmas to you there, Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> For no fucking reason. Who, who demanded to do their, quote, Irish voice? <laughs> <laughs> There's a full minute dedicated to it in this fucking film. <laughs> potato, Mr. <laughs> but yes, sorry. He gets to Wisconsin. Yes, he teleports to Wisconsin. And then we have this like, holy shit, cars moment, right? Yeah, okay. I know this is just a time travel movie trope, but if I get boofed into the future and a big thing is moving towards me super fast, I'm going to jump out of the way immediately, even if I'm not familiar with the technology. Sure. I'm not going to be like, well, I don't know how that transport is working, <laughs> is being moved. I believe they had fucking trains at this point. He's fa he's familiar with large things that move. Yeah, like if a UFO from the future is coming at me, I'm not going to be like, all right, going to do the good old fashioned train dodge last second. Stand <laughs> by me. No. Also, there's, there's this dumbass moment. He opens up a dumpster and he sniffs it and he's like, oh, that smells awful. I'm like, you're from 1844 London, motherfucker. Don't tell me our shit smells bad. Yeah, exactly. You come from a country that was still dumping their wastewater into the street just below the window. Relax. Yeah. I wanted him to show up at a LARPing event and he would just look totally normal for the very first moment of this. I thought that would Ooh. fuck. Oh, there you go. But no. It's too clever no, for this fucking movie. Fascinated by garbage receptacles of the future. Yeah. So and meanwhile, we get a scene of uh, Ronald and Tom looking over their evil plans. And we, we just, it's so fucking stupid because the only thing this scene does is it has Tim turn to uh, Ronald and go, well, you know, I still have the same motivation as the last scene. And Ronald say, says, you sure do. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, all that happens at the end of the scene is Tim being like, hey, uh, one more thing. Just quick. Darwin was right. God is dead. All right, later. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just wanted to double check. Yeah. And that's it. Well, I also love this moment where we're trying to establish how bad a guy Tim is. And he's like, you know, but where will all those homeless people go from the bridge club? And I'm like, they live under a fucking bridge right now. Right. It's not like you're kicking them out of housing. You're kicking them out of not having a place to go. Unless it's houses, it doesn't fucking much matter, does it? Right. Also, just a quick reminder that the Christian agenda of the solution to homelessness being that individuals are going to do charity work is just so you won't make systematic changes. Yep. Just a quick reminder, mm -hmm. just a quick reminder. It's good to do good stuff. But the reason that they're telling you is because they don't want you to vote for Joe Biden in November. Just, yep. just a quick reminder. Yep. Just a quick reminder. <laughs> it's important. As is the very end of this scene, I would have skipped this scene altogether if it wasn't for the fact that the very end of this, Timothy is supposed to, he pulls out this photo of him and Belle back when they were friends in high school. Like a jerk off photo he keeps in an envelope in his desk all the time. Right, mm -hmm. right next to him. And this photo could not look more fake if we could see the scissor marks and the tape, <laughs> right? It's so, so fucking bad. Because it reflects the difference of their ages because it's very clearly they took his high school photo and her high school photo. Mm -hmm. Her high school photo, she's wearing a poodle skirt and like Heiling Hitler or whatever was popular <laughs> when she was in high school. And he's in high school in the 90s and they just fucking smooshed them together it's in so Photoshop. <laughs> 
You know how AI can't do fingers? It was like whole body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. It was yeah, weird. Much like, this was actually the first use of Mid Journey ever. It was for <laughs> this movie, and that's why they abandoned it for 10 years. They were like, oh, never mind. Fuck. They both look like Cthulhu. That's fine. We'll use it. <laughs> and of course, we cut to Belle. She's at the diner. She's looking at the same photo at the same time. Petra comes in. She's like, fuck that guy. And I'm like, yes, fuck Petra. <laughs> you sure you don't want me to kill him? I have still the rat poison. So as they're having this uh, conversation, Mr. Scrooge shows up in their diner. What's he doing there? So he was like, all right, I guess I must have time traveled. <laughs> Going to grab lunch at this diner now. Right. Yes. And he walks in. I mean, he. You're acting like that's not the first thing you would do if you got to the that's future. Not, the first yeah. you would bash I would, your way in. I would like, go future to, burger now. I future would go burger. To a better diner. This <laughs> well, one. Well, that's true. Good. Yeah. Right. Right. Inflation. You wouldn't have any money. You'd be worth like you couldn't afford anything. I would talk my way in. But yeah. Come on, it's Heath. He'd talk his way. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. No. He. So and then so he he comes into the diner. We get the first real example of Heath's best worst. Where he, he walks into this diner, sits at a chair, and becomes fascinated by a ketchup bottle. Hey, they man. so had bottles. There's light bulbs everywhere. Right. <laughs> You're from 1844. <laughs> Focus up. <laughs> yes, yes. Light seems to be appearing from unknown sources in the, in the major change to human life that happened after I died. But look at this bottle. It's squishy. Yeah. It's a, it's exactly like the bottles I have, but it's when you squeeze it, it's not broken. Right. Let's explore this <laughs> motherfucker. Well, and then they go for what they're pretty sure is a hilarious moment where as Petra comes up, he squeezes the bottle and the ketchup comes out and he's not expecting it. And I'm, you know, he doesn't even say that's never happened to me before. They don't lean into the ejaculation joke at all here. No. So it's just, it fails. If I find something, I don't know what it is. I don't squeeze it generally, though. <laughs> okay, well, that makes one of us, Heath. That, that the, I found this very <laughs> relatable. That's what, first instinct? Absolutely. Squeeze it, rat poison. Yeah. yeah. Right away. Squeeze it, everything. rat poison. It's your answer for everything. <laughs> That's what's crocheted into that pillow on my couch. You've seen it yourself. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so but so he's gonna he's trying to ask Petra the year, but he's beaten around the bush as though he's about to broach the subject of a threesome with her. Oh my God, this was un... This is where the movie became truly unbearable, right? Because up until now, it's kind of bad and low quality, but this is where the writer was like, all right, time for me to do some of my classic comedy writing skills. Oh. Six pages of, um, excuse me, here we come. It was just <laughs> absolutely unbearable to watch. I, I was at like 10 times speed at this point. <laughs> so... All right, yeah, so, so but she Desi Arnaz's her way back up to the counter, and she's like, you got to deal with this weird guy who's asking me the fucking year. So Belle goes out to bring him tea, and she's like, you know how we can make Eli hate his time on Earth even more? We could start doing Shakespeare back and forth, me and this actor playing Scrooge. Okay, this, this was great. Hey, everybody, we found it. We found the only way this could be worse. I wanted Shakespeare to run in through the door and be so like, happy. and I also traveled through time to tell you two to shut the fuck up. Because <laughs> I'm here now. And shut up. Shut up. Stop bastardizing my words. Shut up. 37 other people show up with a time machine. It was us, too. But uh, yes, shut you. up. Definitely oh, should. We Jesus. all think. I wouldn't have written this shit if I knew you assholes were going to use it. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, she sits down and asks for his exposition. There's this, I, I have to point out this crazy, stupid fucking line. She's like, everybody's got a story, and I bet you have a humdinger. And he goes, a humbugger? Oh, God. You could, he, hearing was the same in 1844, <laughs> right? Hearing? Hearing the things you heard, you could still hear them? Right. And she's relating to it works now like they're friends because she does the voice. She's like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to improv it up now. I'm an old timey British person. And she starts talking to him like that. Yeah. She starts doing Kramer's British accent at him. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. so clearly the writers were like, when the time travelers show up, the heroes of the world will be the drama kids who can do an accent, but not really at all. <laughs> and that's, yeah. what, that's, that's what we're watching right now. And this is where I want to talk about a feeling that I had through watching this, which is. I don't know if you've ever seen something and you're like, oh, that's the worst part of me, that thing I'm watching. This scene was like, I am 
two conversion concerts away from being the comedy relief in this movie. <laughs> there's, a, there's a parallel universe like right the fuck up next to ours where I'm in this film. Oh. It was deeply uncomfortable. Also, I have to point this out to the actress playing Belle has resting. You missed. That's my asshole. And I'm way more into it than I expected to be face. The look on her <laughs> face at all times is so bizarrely surprised. I don't know. I couldn't, couldn't get over that. Anyway, so they go back and forth with their fucking pablum for just minutes before. So long. Yeah. So, but eventually she realizes that he's from the same firm that's foreclosing on her diner, right? Because that's Scrooge and Cratchit, as it turns out, 170 years later or whatever. And she decides that he must be a spy. Yes, he's a old timey Victorian. Exactly. What would like a corporate spy to from what end? The mortgage For bank whom? that is going to foreclose needs to send a spy to the diner to like gather information that hasn't paid in eight months. And if they did send a spy, why would he pretend to be an old timey British guy from the 19th century? <laughs> okay. Perfect crime. Can I say that? <laughs> Thank you, Heath. That is actually a perfect crime because I will say a corporate spy who was like, I'm a time traveler. I would be so thrown off. You wouldn't be close to corporate spy. By the I'm a time traveler yeah. gambit that I would be like, yeah, I mean, here's the <laughs> accounting reports for the company, but I'm sorry, you think you're from the past? <laughs> Yeah, so he leaves. He takes her foreclosure notice for some reason and for reasons that just baffled me deep into the night last night, he asks Matthew how to get to the offices of Scrooge and Cratchit. And we, Matthew is one of the, the homeless guys from earlier. And we, we have to establish that this guy's a character here. So we watch him give directions to Scrooge for uh, minute 45 but oh my God. Detailed directions. I am so grateful for Google. Google Maps could kill one extinct species a year, and I would still be grateful <laughs> because it put an end to this kind of direction giving. We are going to take a hard left after the Macaulay. No, Sorry. okay, say the address out loud. Hard I left? never have to talk to you again. Goodbye forever. Do you mean left? How hard? <laughs> so left out of the building. And the entire directions is go left, walk this far, go right at this road, you're there. That's it. That's the yep. whole thing. It's pretty it fucking forever. straightforward. Yeah. Also, Scrooge does leave an old timey coin to That's pay for right. his whatever he got. Yes, he pays for it with a British crown coin. Yes. Yeah. I was like, that's probably worth a bunch. And they actually try to explore this later. It doesn't help. And and they get it, yeah, it gets it, they get it very wrong and it doesn't even work within their movie. All right, well, I'll tell you what, if I waited for suspense, we'd never get a break. So we're gonna take one right now, but we'll be back in a minute with even more of Mr. Scrooge to see you. Mon podcast vous play? That's right, what? podcast listener. It's me, Eli Bosnick. And that language you just heard me speak was Indonesian. Nope. French, sort of. And the reason I'm here to tell you the second best way to learn a language is Babbel. Eli does not use Babbel, for the record. No, Heath, I don't. But one in five Americans have learned a new language on their bucket list. If that's you, check it off the list this summer with Babbel. Because with Babbel, you start speaking a new language in just three weeks. Or as they say in Russian, Spanikopita. Also, no. Nope. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are a little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Plus, Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. It's true. I used Babbel to brush up on my French before a recent trip, and Anna used it to get her Swedish ready just a few months ago. She did. The speech recognition really helps her pronunciation, and the lessons are useful for real-world situations. And here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash awful. That's 55% off at babbel.com slash awful. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash awful. Rules and restrictions may apply. Babbel. Per chalk wanna have them. Pretty, pretty, pretty sure that was just nonsense noise. How dare you speak that way about Congolese? Nope, not Congolese. 
Oh dear, oh dear, it's almost Christmas and I must get my shopping done. Seriously, you're shopping again? Oh, hello, Jacob Marley. Hi, Ebenezer. So, who are you shopping for? Oh, you know, the village children, perhaps Bob Cratchit. Bob Cratchit, again. You know what? Why don't you just marry him, Ebenezer? Look, J- Jacob, I don't know what to tell you. I have the Christmas spirit. Shouldn't you be, well, I, don't, I don't know, gone? gone? And there it is again. I have the Christmas spirit. Why are you still here? I don't know, Ebenezer. Maybe my unfinished business is being appreciated, in which case I think I'm going to be here for a long time. Seriously, I cannot have this fight again. Just admit it. You used me to get the Christmas spirit, but you don't want me around anymore. It's not that. It's it's not that I don't want you around anymore. I just don't know why you're here. Wow, and you don't hear how hurtful that is to me. Uh, Mr. Scrooge, you want to see me? Uh, Bob, now is not a great time. No, actually, it's a great time. I'll be in the bathroom. Hi, Jacob. Bitch. I'm so, I'm so sorry about him. Oh, it's fine. He's frustrated. I get it. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with a good five minutes of this poor actor trying to vamp 19th century guy walking on a modern sidewalk. There's no speed YouTube was physically capable of that this wasn't boring. (laughs) I was at like 10x speed and I was still bored. I was at 1.5 and the music was very, very slow Uh at 1.5. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? I put it back to regular speed and it was like prank level slow. Yeah, It was was like a middle school concert for a band. It was so rough. (laughs) Well, and we should point out here, look, look, the whole man out of time trope is a trope precisely because it's so easy to write jokes around. It's so easy to look around the modern world and imagine what would be funny about a guy from 1844 trying to figure out what this does or what this is. This movie's writers never thought of anything. Nope. They were pretty sure it was going to come to them. Yeah. I feel like they just set this poor actor up because this guy is the only, I, like, I, he's I, a real actor. I don't know what that fucking means, but he's the only real actor in the film. He actually seems to have some sense of what it is to act, right? Yeah. So I feel like they were like, no, no, we have a guy. He was on a real TV show twice. He can just vamp. No, trust me. This guy, he's been a dead body on two <laughs> different CSI shows. He, he will lead us with. He's, he's our Tom Hanks, let me tell you. Oh, what if we have meet Funny Steve and he's Santa Claus? Funny Steve, right? Oh, Funny, Funny Steve, Steve does jokes. Is this the fat red-haired gentleman we've seen yes. in a- Tory Martin. It yes, it is. It is. Uh, yeah. At first I was like, Rain Wilson? Oh no, it's the guy <laughs> from all these fucking things that's Funny Steve. Can I say, and I feel like we don't touch on this enough, Tory Martin is too talented for Christian cinema, and it makes me sad yeah. every time we That's see him. That's true and sad, yes. <laughs> yep, he's doing his damnedest, but the lines are so bad here. He's got nothing. But yeah, so so Scrooge sees him dressed as Santa. He sees a Santa, and he's like, oh, you must be the spirit of Christmas present. You can explain the plot to me. And they spend five fucking minutes exploring all the comedy of he sees Santa and thinks he's somebody he isn't. Sorry, was Scrooge visited by Santa Claus in A Christmas Carol? I don't. Is that I, controversial? Something that happened in that? I don't think so. Controversial whether or not. Were they just going for like the pun of Christmas present with present? Is that all they had? Well, so that's the thing is that he's visited by a giant, jolly, laughing ghost of Christmas present in A Christmas Carol. And then the Muppets Christmas Carol, the ultimate Christmas Carol, obviously made it more canonical. He's not in the red and white suit, but he is like, ho, 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 know me better, man. And so a lot of people think that like, <sighs> that's Santa, but okay, it's definitely not explicit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Muppet's Christmas Carol is the best. But anyway, so Tori Martin desperately tries to inject some humor in this. He can't. So eventually he just calls him a cab. Now, luckily, New Britain, Wisconsin has a thriving taxi industry. It's easier to get a cab there than NYC, right? Yes, absolutely. And they don't require payment or directions. <laughs> no, <luckily>. they don't. <laughs> he just sticks Ebenezer in the car and they drive off to the next scene. So... We get the taxi. It's pulling up at the Scrooge and Cratchit office, right? 
he goes in and I guess they keep him waiting. He says he wants to speak to Mr. Cratchit. and He's got to wait forever. Mm hmm. But they don't show us that. So it, we just immediately cut inside and it's like, there's a guy waiting to see you. And I'm like, oh, it's it's a different part of the time dimension now. All right. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, before that, we get a, a few we have to establish even further that. Timothy Cratchit is a very evil Scrooge like character, right? He's walking through the office and he's like, fire Saunders. And they're like, but it's Christmas. And he says, well, then gift wrap his notice. And I'm like, yeah. nice. That's and pretty good. Actually. Saunders is sitting right there as they. <laughs> he's so close. It's so fucking funny. They just look over like, hey, buddy, you heard that all right. So cool. Get out of here. You heard that, right? The, that you're fired. I don't really have to give rabbit now, do I? Because you heard him <laughs> say that. They go into uh, Tim's office. Ronald is there telling him, oh, man, you know, it's about that time where we have to make our annual charitable donation to the youth center. And he's like, fuck charity. He says, this is extortion. And then he plans to hike up their rent. And now the plot is he's literally trying to shut down the teen center. That's <laughs> yes, what's yes, happening yes. in this movie. I wrote in my notes, if Ebenezer Scrooge challenges him to a ski off, this has become my favorite <laughs> movie. I was furious later when they didn't do a ski off that I was expecting. Thank you. Right? For sure. Yeah. So, yeah, but, but then they get done and Scrooge just happened on the window. They have this really weird moment where it seems like the writer didn't adjust for the fact that this was going to be a glass door. Yeah, the writer did not know where the camera was going to be when he wrote this scene. So even though Tim... He could have used Tiny Tim's crotch as a pole. Sorry for the skiing. It would have been great. Phenomenal. Yeah, oh, thank you. There you go. Yes. Come on. Important. Yeah. Would have tied the movie together. But the writer did not know where the camera was going to be. So Tim is looking at Scrooge tapping on the door and he's like, what's that? And Ronald's like, it's heating vents. And both actors are like, that's not what it is. I'm looking at it. <laughs> right. Yes. He says, yeah, no, there's this guy who's come to see you. He says it, he's got a very profitable thing to talk to you about. And he's like, all right, fine, send him in. So he walks in and he says, I'm Ebenezer Scrooge. Now, here's how this is supposed to go. In the writer's mind, Timothy now looks from Scrooge to this these paintings he's got on the wall of all of the people who were leaders of this company all through time. And he recognizes Scrooge from one of these pictures. But. But. It's. The worst painting ever. <laughs> it's so yes. clearly someone in the production was like, don't your wife paint? She could do it. The picture looks nothing at all Seriously, like this actor. Like, Mr. Scrooge here to see you. He looks over at fucking Cthulhu on the wall and he's like, <laughs> oh. It's so fucking good. This is probably time travel in real reality that happened. Same person. <laughs> For sure. It's so fucking incredible because they they look they went and got a bunch of like prop paintings right old victorian portraits right that are painted painted by people who can paint and then it pans over to this fucking <laughs> cardboard high school level Finger my paint. first yes. oil painting <laughs> and everyone in the scene is just like yup that's the picture, yes. all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great. And the director's daughter did not make it after getting out of the hospital. And we're not allowed to say why she was there. So we yes. all, <laughs> that's you. Mm -hmm. sure I bet is. you I could buy that painting. If I wrote to the people from <gasps> Salt the Earth Pictures and I was like, I'm a big fan, I could buy that painting. I bet it's still around. Already scooped all it. All right. God damn it. So <laughs> this is Sim Paul Cindy. This is Sim Paul Cindy all over again. <laughs> so, so yeah, so we cut to the like, so you're telling me post-conversation wrap-up between these two, right? Where he's like, you know, I'm a little skeptical that you're a time traveler from the future, but I'm sure a little bit of trivia about my company's past will trip you up. Guys, is that all it takes to prove you're from the past is two and a half trivia questions? <laughs> no, three. Three. And Those then it's time traveler. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. He's like, wait, wait, when did the company move all the hell way out to nowhere ass Wisconsin? They're like, when the producers check to see how much the travel costs would be. Yeah. Uh, I think. There's also this, uh, speaking of the paintings, there's also this stupid fucking moment where he looks over at uh, all the paintings and he goes, oh, well, that painting there would be Tiny Tim. And we look at the painting and it's like a 60 something year old guy. Yeah. Why, why would he recognize Tiny Tim, the child he knows? <laughs> From an old man in a painting. It's the weirdest. Pa there are lots of paintings of people. And he chooses the one that is, is of an old man who appears to be playing with a set, set of scales. Yes. Uh huh. I don't know why that. would. It's just the weirdest choice for him to make space work wise. Yeah. 
What does the movie think paintings are in my head? Great question. Like a yeah. magical thing, I think. Clearly. Yeah. So, okay. So, but ultimately, Tim has Scrooge forcibly ejected from the property. Apparently, this is one of those financial management companies that has a bouncer. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Yeah. The Bowser's American flag tie was fucking amazing. I thought Fantastic. about getting that for Eli for Christmas. I <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I need it for my patriotic events. So, yeah. So, but Scrooge wanders off for a, a sad musical number for so long. <laughs> it's a montage. It's a montage of the movie trying to figure out what's different since 1844 <laughs> and eventually getting to not yet something electronic. Yep. Not yet, though. Yep. They'll get there eventually. But first we have to look at um, Belle calculating her her bills, looking very worried. Oh, yeah. She's very exasperate. Like, she does one calculator thing. And then according to, I guess, that exact plus minus calculation, the diner's out of money. But like mm -hmm. a moment yeah, before that, the, she, she wasn't sure. And then she was like, oh, it says I lose. Oh, it's calculator. a negative number. Shit. Again. <laughs> yeah, we, we watch uh, Tim... Uh, sadly looking over their shitty fake photo. Uh, we see the homeless people all gathered around the trash barrel having a good old time. They seem to be loving life. Mm -hmm. But then we see Belle looking at that coin that Mr. Scrooge paid with earlier, that old timey coin. So anyway, so this all resolves with Scrooge sitting down on a park bench, I guess, finding a place to sleep for the night. And just then homeless Matthew shows up from earlier. He's got some bits about pretending it's a hotel. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to watch like <laughs> 26 minutes of that? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to watch that on three and a half speed. <laughs> oh, my God. It's fucking unbearable. Yeah. Unbearable. It's this like we can't talk about anything form of Christian comedy that is just like a car crash in slow motion level of watching it. Oh, but well, and then they get done with that and they sit down and they tell each other the plot back and forth again that we already know. This is the third time this movie has summarized this movie. Matthew sits down on the bench with him. He goes, well, it's too bad that Bell's Diner's getting foreclosed on. Let's expound on that a bit. Well, I'm from the past and now I'm here. But well, you fucking say, well, then the tiny Tim's going to take the company away. <laughs> he ends the conversation by saying, I'm here to serve. And that's definitely an offer to suck his dick. I right? think Like so. that's something Scrooge misses. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but ultimately Matthew gives a gives him a blanket and then wanders off. Scrooge just inexplicably waxes intellectual about the nature of time travel oh, and whether or not he can change the future. Okay, I know this isn't a very universal reference, but you know when you do bad drugs and it sort of drags your whole body downward into the earth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's how I felt watching this movie <laughs> is, oh shit, it's going to be a bad six hours <laughs> level of high. Eli's just chewing on as many orange peels as he can get. Literally. <laughs> I was just, yeah. <laughs> Need a chill out tent from this movie. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tastes bad. <laughs> so then we get another stupid fucking dream sequence. Nightmare sequence with uh, with Scrooge and Marley in the door. It's me again. Hello, Scrooge. Still hey. here. Here back in time with you, yeah. apparently. Okay, what are you? You're handing me a, a key to this porta potty that I'm standing at. What's uh huh? All right. What then? This is pretty interesting. Are we going to go yep. somewhere with this? Nope. Do you no, have any questions right. about are me, you going to come inside Marley? the porta potty? What with I'm me? dealing with? What what's going on? With what was my childhood like? Are we ever going to resolve? Huh? Any of this shit? No. What would you say you do here? <laughs> but just then, as he opens the dream door or whatever, Belle wakes him up, right? Apparently, she's found him to tell him how valuable that coin he gave her is. Oh, I love when poor people try to do what a lot of money is, right? Because they're always like, that's a lot of money. That's $8. Or in this case, she tells him that the English pound from two years ago is worth $2,000. Yeah, I looked. I said, I, I saw these for like 250 bucks, 300 bucks, something like that. So it seems like they're a little off. But also, yeah, in the amount of like given the amount of money that she needs, it's useless, right? It pales in comparison to her debt. You get like enough of blow to have like a really good night. Yeah, well, that's I mean, true. a really good final party at the <laughs> dinner bell, I guess. 
But yeah, so, but Bell is like, well, you know, I can't let you sleep on this bench. Why don't you come to my house and stay there? And he's like, well, don't you let people sleep on benches every fucking night, though, that you know? And she's like, no, shut up. Yeah, but they're not white coated and you are. Come on, let's get it back. Let's get you back to my place. So, yeah, so she takes Scrooge back to her place for the night and he's very impressed with tea bags, not tea bagging. Don't get your hopes up. You're in the future. Why would this be the thing you're fucking rocked There's by? You've so seen much so tea. much cooler things. In England, you have tea for sure. And he's like, this bag like container of tea? There's a, a fridge next saying? to you, a yes, phone, a, a microwave <laughs> oven, a fucking digital clock. You're sitting in a heated house. Yes. Like, there's so with much. No fireplace. Right. So, yeah. So, and Bell's like, wait, so you really believe the plot? And he's like, well, maybe if we rehash the story again uh, in consecutive scenes, if I tell you the plot. You know how you're losing your time on a tiny time? Of time, <laughs> time of you know those bits, those comedy bits where someone has to repeat information to the next person yeah. with the one thing added on? That's what this, this movie was like. That could be a movie. <laughs> So, yeah, so she's and he's like, well, what's your backstory, Bell? And she's like, well, you know, all I have in my life is Petra, my uncompensated slave employee and my faith. Fuck yeah, Christian movie. Yeah. And he says, well, you know, I know a little something about faith. And I'm like, well, at least he has a better excuse for retaining an 1844 worldview here, I guess. (laughs) Hey, do we agree on way too many things? We do. It's weird. Right. My so, politics and yours are really aligned. <laughs> oh, and they do more Shakespeare, Eli, together. Oh, God, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> forgot. But then he realizes he still has the contract that Bob Cratchit signed that made him half owner. He's still got that in his pocket. And that proves that he is who he says he is. Mm-hmm. But it'll only work <laughs> if he looks like he's from now. I, why go fuck I, yourself? Why would that prove it's a it's even in this story, it's a thing he wrote. It's paper that looks brand new. Sure. So it must be from 1844 <laughs> time travel. There's no other explanation for that. Yep. Well, don't worry. We'll we'll review that with a, a Princeton expert. Don't worry. Ronald yeah. will really clarify yeah, no, that. Just, yeah, we'll right. bring in some expertise here. Yeah. God, I forgot about the line Ronald's going to say about that. It's, it's my favorite it's, line in the fucking movie. Ab- absolutely the dumbest line in this film. Yeah, so you have that to look forward to. So yeah, so she's like, oh, well, now that you have this undeniable proof in the form of a letter that you wrote two days ago, we need to go see Timothy together. But first, you'll need to try on my dead dad's suit. I, I don't know why we... And she pulls it out and she's like, mm, smells like dead dad. And I was like, yes. where are you going, movie? You're going right? left, you're going right, and you never end up doing the thing that I want you to do. You're just teasing. Okay. That was an incest teaser. All right. No, that makes sense, though. <laughs> All right. So then she takes him to the cell phone store, buy him a phone, right? You need one of those. <laughs> yeah. She takes him to U.S. Cellular. Like, fuck yeah, she does. Store for that company to buy a phone. No. Mm. I wrote in my notes, this is what it's like introducing Noah to technology. Noah, are you Ebenezer Scrooge? You have to tell well, us. <laughs> she could have just showed him how to fuck. She's just saying, swipe <laughs> the phone. And she's like, what does that mean, though? You could have just <laughs> demonstrated. Fuck. Somebody showed me an iPhone for the first time, and I had the same reaction in like 2005 or whatever that was. I was like, yeah, what the true. fuck is this? Get right. out of here. <laughs> so. So she gets him a phone. She also, she has uh, made up a bunch of business word flashcards. Enterprise was definitely a word in the 1840s. I believe it was. Definitely yes. a word they had. Yep. <laughs> he learns how to order coffee, modern coffee, right? He does way better than Eli at Starbucks. Hey. Fair. He does. He like, does. That's so fair. much less obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> he does his order here. Well, I wrote my notes here. I'm like, okay, to be fair to this movie, talking on the phone, spouting buzzwords and ordering coffee are the only requirements to work in finance, though. She nailed it, right? That's true, yeah. Also, he learned Spanish for some reason. And modern slang, right? Petra's teaching him slang and Spanish. Yeah, no idea. I wanted her to be teaching him murder against everyone else as well. She's <laughs> like, I just want to teach him three ways to kill him. Yeah. Not all 50, <laughs> just three. So, and then he tries a hot dog. For the first time, which again, I'm pretty sure they fucking had in the Absolutely 1800s. Absolutely had sausages. 100% had sausages. Yeah. He would recognize a fucking sausage. <laughs> so he's like, what is it? She says, it's a hot dog. And he looks at a dog and he's like, oh, no. 
<laughs> Everyone in this movie was waiting for a cartoon sound effect that never came. Mm -hmm. So, and then she's like, well, you know, it's time for us to go to see Timothy, but you can't do it in those clothes. You'll need a new suit. And I'm like, oh, we're going to do a fucking pretty woman suit montage here because I am, I'm in. You turned me away, sir. Big mistake. Right. Huge. <laughs> right. But they don't do it. They totally skip it. They skip it. He's just now in a nicer suit. No, she's like, yeah, we'll uh, we'll buy you a new suit. Oh, you know what? We can use that uh, fancy coin that's worth two thousand dollars. And then a moment later, he's in a suit. So they like sold that old coin for cash in the men's warehouse parking lot, and then <laughs> yeah. obviously got a suit. They went to the used coin dealer, yeah. ancient coin dealer, mm -hmm. got a great price for it, got the price she found online, and then bought a suit. With sure, it. Okay. sure, no, that makes perfect sense. But yeah, but then she's like, "Get in my car, and we'll drive." away and he's like oh I'm not getting one of those again and and of course we're like well then how did you get here right you weren't here before also why would that be so much different than a horse and carriage which is what he insists on them taking yeah, yeah. also why would there be a horse and carriage there I, I don't like feel better in my car when I'm like driving next to modern cars I'm not like oh <laughs> old Subaru nice no <laughs> so yeah so so but they all head to Timothy's office together and it, it, we get the dumbest goddamn line in the movie. So Ronald, the assistant, is looking over the document that he's brought, the contract that Bob Cratchit signed at the beginning of the movie. And he says, well, you, you know well, that I did minor in document authentication in college at Princeton. <laughs> Yep, you sure did. <laughs> well, if you say this new piece of paper is from 200 years ago and he's a time traveler, I guess we have to give him half of this firm. And that is the plot now. Oh, my fucking God. Yeah. So first of all, I have to point out. So they've got the two contracts sitting there. They've got like the one that Scrooge just brought. And then they've also got the 170 year old version of it sitting right next to it, but they don't know how to make something look 170 years old. So very clearly they put this through the dryer twice they just and they were like, crumpled it. we so were going to do it a third time, but I think it's going to fall apart if we do it a third it will time. Get torn. We didn't so. wanna. It's a papyrus scroll. It's so dumb. <laughs> yeah. And then they go into the corner for a whisper fight. It's fucking amazing. He's like, Ronald, can I speak to you in this very obvious office, which is just <laughs> the floor? Oh, we're we're, we're going to go. We're, we're like three feet away now. You want to go like yeah, six? Yeah, just step like, like one we'll foot away. Yeah, okay, right six. here. Yep. What, what the up? fuck are you doing? <laughs> I just, it's it's time. If you time travel, you have to give them their, right? We have to lose it all? <laughs> yeah, Ronald's response is, you're ruining Christmas. Just give the old guy half our company. <laughs> right. He says, he says, hey, look, if we decide not to give this time traveler, this man who claims to be a time traveler from the 1840s, half of our company, that could create some very negative PR right before Christmas. How? Could also hurt fourth quarter profits. Yes. And I was like, yeah, to lose half the company because of time travel. Yeah, it could. It could hurt the profits. <laughs> yeah, that would, uh, that's, that's not good. Yeah. That's not great. Yeah, but he's like, all right, well, I'll play along with giving this man half of my company for now. For now. For now. <laughs> but yeah, a contract that says until I count to 100. I mean, to be fair, you and Heath kind of did that with me. So I don't know no, how much okay, you yeah, no. judge. They should have given you a physical and a blood test like they did. <laughs> you should have. <laughs> it's mostly syrup. Yeah, right. As it turns out. But yeah, so, but he's like, you know, I want you to investigate, tells Ronald, I want you to investigate Bell and Scrooge and find out what's really going on. So they return to the table and they tell him that, yes, you can have half the company, but you have to take the mandatory blood test and physical that we have for all new executives at their big finance company in New Britain, Wisconsin. This will never come back or matter. Well, yeah, it, it's supposed to be that they're going to check his DNA against the Oh, because apparently they've saved a drop of the founder's blood all these years or <laughs> some crazy I shit. have some blood of our founder. You know what? Hold on to that in case a tra uh, time traveler ever <laughs> <Yeah>. comes through <laughs> so the, trying to do saint? some eminent domain Maybe it's shit. The relic this is a of great a idea. Saint? I don't know. Keith, I need some of your blood for future business reasons. Yeah. And they ask him, they're <laughs> like, so, you know, Ed, now that you own half of the company, what will your agenda be? And he just spouts a bunch of um, fancy buzzwords. So it's a good thing he learned all of those. Yeah. And then Timothy leaves and I got jealous of him. I was like, I wish I could. I all, yeah, I literally wrote, thank God. 
All right, well, I'll tell you what, we're two-thirds of the way into this movie, and I think it finally has a plot, so we're going to celebrate with a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Tim give Belle a free building? Will he also give her half of his company? Will he turn out to have been Petra's love interest all along? Yes, on all three. I actually gave, I really gave it the hard sell this time. You never know. So stick around for the way more Christian than the first two acts conclusion of Mr. Scrooge to see you. See you. Okay. Well, can you think of something on Amazon? Yes, I read your list. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Hey, Eli, what's going on? Yeah, did you ask Wendy's if you could buy one of their old signs? Because it's it's been a firm no, man. Okay, first of all, management changes at that place all the time. But no, I'm trying to think of a good gift for my mom for the holidays. Well, what does she say she wants? <sighs> Check out her Christmas list here. Let's see. Christmas list for me, Ma. Uh, more time with Max. Extra Max time. Max's cheeks severed and put into a bag so I can pinch them whenever I want. You see my problem, right? Yeah, no, I do. I do. Yeah, I get it, though. Well, why don't you try a digital picture frame from Aura Frames loaded with all her favorite pics? It was named the number one digital frame by Wirecutter, The Strategist, and Wired. Wow, it was? It sure was. The best part, this is the gift that keeps on giving. It has unlimited storage, so you and the rest of your family can upload as many pics to the frame as you want year-round. All you need is the free Aura app. But is there a special offer just for our listeners? Absolutely. Give the perfect gift this holiday season by visiting AuraFrames.com today and get $30 off their best-selling frames with the code AWFUL. These frames sell out quickly, so get yours before they're gone. That's A-U-R-A-Frames.com with the promo code AWFUL. Terms and conditions apply. All right, guys. Thanks. Man, these demands get really, uh, really kidnappy towards the end. Yeah, it's a grandma thing. No, yeah, no, I get it. Sure. The magazine cutout letters are a really nice touch. Thank you, Heath. Oh, Ronald, I can't wait to bring some Christmas spirit to the office. Me neither, Mr. Scrooge. Have, have you sent Catherine a Merry Christmas bonus? I did, sir. I did. Hmm. And, and you made sure a toy train was sent to all of Craig's beautiful children? Each and every one of them. Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Now, uh, who's, who's this fella? Oh, this is Moishi Schwartzbaum. He's in accounting. Hi, Mr. Scrooge. Nice to meet you. Ah, Mr. Uh, Schwartzbaum, was it? Yeah, yeah. I really love all the decorations and stuff that you've done here at the mm -hmm. office. I suppose you do. Sorry? Nothing. Uh, listen, Moishi. Uh, it's it's Moishi, actually. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, whatever. Uh, you're not offended by any of this, are you? Oh, the Christmas stuff? Oh, no, it's fine. I mean, maybe we could put up a menorah, but honestly, I think we it's lovely. We most certainly will not be putting up a menorah up. Okay, that is fine. Oh, well, thank you so much for your permission. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go to church to worship my Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Maybe you've heard of him? As someone you murdered? <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. He's from 1844, so. Oh, I just yeah. thought he was a Republican. Yeah, yeah, that tracks. I'm gonna go cough on him. Nice, yeah. I'll help. <laughs> I'll help. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're gonna rejoin the action with Tim at work in his office while Scrooge sits at a nearby table loudly playing games on his phone. Again, a very good metaphor for what it's like for Noah and Heath to work with you. I think this is, uh... You don't put the sound down on your phone. <laughs> That's true. He's playing on speaker on full volume from his, like, <laughs> you got, like, the ghost of Christmas future needs to, like, fly in like an angry bird, which is the game he's playing, and smash into him and side tackle him through the window or something. Horrible. Nope, the Christian thing doesn't count. You're playing a game at full volume in a public place. Sorry. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Well, honestly, this movie does a lot of work from here on out trying to get me to side with the Scrooge character with Bob Cratchit, right? Because, yes, he's fucking playing his fucking phone game. You're trying to work. You just got to have the fucking company at least sit at a desk and pretend you're moving papers around or some fucking shit, right? Yeah. But yeah, so he we watch him do that for a while. And then we see Scrooge, like we have like sort of a montage of Scrooge being a great businessman, mm -hmm. right? He, we see him, he walks through the office and he takes an interest in every employee and everybody loves him. And he, he has a chart. And he wows their clients with his chart or whatever. 
he offers to take the clients for some smoking bishop. I looked it up. Smoking bishop is an old timey drink that Dickens references in the Christmas Carol story. But the only reference to smoking a bishop I knew was slang for a blowjob. So I was like, that is one way to close the deal. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you I say, mean, gentlemen? Shall I get on my knees and jerk you all off onto my face? <laughs> hmm? Okay, so maybe this is how we did thing in my day. <laughs> maybe Dickens exists in this universe, but he didn't write a Christmas Carol. Sure. So none of those names are are familiar to them. There you go. I think that now it all makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I stopped to smoke me some fucking Bishop real quick at this point in the movie as well. Again, I only know what the blowjob. Uh, okay, it's well, it wasn't confusing. that. Yeah. <laughs> so then we get to, or you know what, Eli, in your imagination, it can be that. Thank you. <laughs> so then we get, we get. You've gotten weird since the heart attack. Can I say? <laughs> you've taken up some weird new activities. So, okay. So then we get to uh, Mr. Scrooge holding a press conference about this big donation that they're going to give to the youth center. Yeah. They have a really long bit about how he doesn't know how a microphone works, which I get it. Like I get doing that, but he apparently also doesn't know how holding works. I'm pretty sure there were cylinders you held with your yep, hand. There sure were in 1844. <laughs> how else would you smoke a Bishop? Yeah. What is this new geometry? <laughs> and he like throws it away. It's so dumb. Yeah, but so they donated fifty thousand dollars to the youth center and lowered the rent instead of raising it. Cratchit is so pissed. Oh, there's a lot of this sequence, which will last up until I would say the denouement at the end of the movie. There's a lot of like Scrooge. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, you know, the, it comes in quick succession, right? He's in his office, and the assistant comes in, and we're like, "Oh, here's the new ads. They're all about Mr. Scrooge." And then he turns on the TV, and there's a ad for his company with Scrooge on it. And then he changes the channel and it's a it's the same ad, but in Spanish. See, the Spanish paid and off. It all came back. It's, no reason to question it. Remember? I wish more housing companies did that, though. They just took their weird owners and made them the face. Hi, I'm from Blackstone Realty. We own uh, almost like 75% of New York's buildings. And I'm Dave Blackstone. I have connections to Saudi Arabia and maybe a boy slave. Come on and pay your rent, everybody. <laughs> Now I'm going to say it's the same thing in Spanish. Yeah, right. Bonjour, it's me, Dave Blackstone, El Boyo Slaverino. <laughs> so, Babel. That would, oh, right, right. No, it's Italian for the advertiser. I'm sure they'll love it. You're welcome, Babel. Yeah, so. <laughs> Babel, El Boyo Slaverino. And now he says it in French, Eli. Bonjour, un garçon. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Slave. So then we get Timothy meeting with Belle in an alleyway, right? His, his limo pulls up and he gets out. It's dark. It's the middle of the night. And I'm like, if he stabs her to death in this alley, it would at least be unexpected, right? Pushes her in front of a subway train. Yeah, yeah right. I, 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 there's, there's a lot of opportunity of here. Thing that you could do there. But no, he says he'll give her the deed to her restaurant and forgive the entire mortgage if she'll get rid of Scrooge. What? Like... Like send him back in time. What was being asked of? Him? I don't know. Oh, the the implication was I wanted Petra to be like, I get it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Give me five minutes with his coffee, and I'll be all taken care right. of. She just slices, walks from behind him. Yeah, already killed him. We're good. We're good. Yeah, <laughs> but here's the thing: she could just ask Scrooge to do that because Scrooge owns half the company, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Now that he does, yeah. It's all so fucking stupid. And of course, her response should be like, well, you know, I can't make other humans do stuff. You know that, right? But instead, she's like, no. And she tears up the deed at length. Takes her a minute. Okay, well, here's the th This is my favorite physical bit because she's trying to tear it up in his face, but she's wearing mittens <laughs> and she can't quite get the grip on the paper. She, she so can't she's get like, her mitten off. <laughs> oh, come on. I just, she's put the mitten in her mouth and she's like, hey, hey, over, <laughs> so, hold on, hold on. You do that the, 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 the sleeve on the wrist Turn. is tight. It's tight. You have to get it. You hold gonna, one side. The Velcro around the I'm going to take the jacket off. I'm going to take the jacket off. Where's it start? <laughs> Zipper stuck. So yeah, but she tears up the deed and she says, no, I won't do it. It's called loyalty and friendship, Tim. And I'm like, I don't think, I think it's just called autonomy. You other yeah, I don't think people. It's so then we get Tim, he's, he goes back to the office and damn it if Tory Martin's Santa isn't standing out there. He's now the new Santa bell ringer at the Scrooge and Cratchit office. Yeah. 
he's also entirely blocking the door, which is a bit of a dumbass fucking move. But, you know, we, we, we see this because we have to have Timothy getting really angry about how Christmas up the office is now. I wanted it to cut to the office and the two Jewish employees just look super uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He turns to Ronald and he goes, Ronald, who's responsible for this? And Ronald's like, who the fuck do you think did a giant Christmas thing, man? Ebenezer Scrooge. That's obviously. Yeah. Oh, and and it goes to like give Scrooge a piece of his mind. But on the way, he passes Saunders, who Scrooge is hired back and given a raise. (laughs) Jesus fucking Christ. Scrooge is just bouncing around on a bouncy castle dressed as Santa Claus, <laughs> dressing a tree. It's great. Yeah. So, yeah. so he goes into the office to tell off Scrooge about all the decorations. And Timothy, once again, he's like, hey, give me back the company card. And I'm like, I see, I'm, I got a ton of sympathy for this guy. I understand. I've been here. I've been That's in this true. place. That is fair. Okay. That's fair. But Scrooge is the boss. He could just be like, no, I am. <laughs> We own equal amount. He could say to him what I said to you. Yeah. We own equal amounts of the company. You'll have to trick me out of it by throwing an invisible ball like Heath does. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> Works every time. Yeah, but Timothy explains that they can't afford to be married, damn it. That cuts into the bottom line. He has this whole big, long, um, what good is Christmas ever done speech that he gives. Yeah, and Scrooge counters with, uh, maybe you've heard of a little... Babe in a manger. Yes. I just wrote in my notes. Fuck yeah, Christmas movie. He goes straight up Linus speech from fucking Holly- Charlie Brown Christmas. Yeah. And then Timothy, again, as if I didn't like this guy enough, is like, uh, well, your religion is a fairy tale for children, a crutch for the weak. And I'm like, this at a certain point, you just have to pay me royalties if you're just going to use me in your Exa- movie. Thank you. Yes. But this movie counters. Real line from this movie, sometimes religion is the crutch we need. Yes, yes. They literally call it a fucking crutch. (laughs) And then like angry atheist Cratchit has to be like, I'm an orphan, so I don't know what I'm talking about. No, you're not. You're not an orphan. You're not. Is is he an orphan? I don't think he is. I think the movie's wrong about the movie. So he's an orphan. (laughs) which is why he doesn't understand the concept of love. But Scrooge explains he's not really an orphan because he's Jesus's kid. Yeah. Like it got really fucking Christian all of a sudden. So Ebenezer goes to leave. Timothy yells back at him. By the way, you die on June 6th of 1870. Bam. Gotcha. It's a good zinger. It is is a good zinger. That's solid, to be fair. And then everyone in the office looks at him, and he's like, I tell you your death dates all the time. (laughs) I tell you, come on. We did that for White Elephant last year, and you guys all thought it was pretty cool. Jewish guy, don't sass me. (laughs) So so Ronald and Cratchit meet later at the diner, right? Because the last time we saw Ronald, he was being instructed to investigate Bell and Scrooge and see if he could dig up any dirt on him. He comes back and he's like, nah, man, I looked into it and he's definitely a time traveler. He's legit. Well, you know, I might have minored in document authentication, but I majored in (laughs) genealogical (laughs) identification. So, yeah, that guy is a time traveler. Time travelology. Yeah. And he's like, but I do have some information about Bell. And he hands Timothy a piece of paper, but we won't know what's on it yet. Suspense initiated. And Ronald's like, I'd love to stick around, but I have to go help a friend to pack up her restaurant that some asshole is kicking her out of. And he goes, oh, that sounds fun. Have have at it. You know, he goes to leave and he has this weird moment where like clearly the writer thought they had something interesting to say about the nature of kindness. And then they started writing and realized that that they didn't, but they kept going anyway. It's like. You know when you win a Facebook fight and the person's like, well, I'm going to write the last comment, but it's also going to be kind of a good day, sir. But they, you've demonstrated that they're wrong. So they're like, you know, I don't have time to spend all day on Facebook. Some of us have real jobs. That's this the speech. <laughs> it's some of us don't have time to be on Facebook. My 97th comment. Yes. Say good day, sir. So so we get, we get Scrooge. He's wandering through town at night. I guess they felt like they really needed a good comedy beat right here. So we spend three and a half minutes watching him be scared of and then attack big inflatable Christmas dolls in someone's yard. Yes, but the people whose yard it was were like, you can't pop my Christmas dolls. 
And they were like, oh, so we'll just have him pretend to fight them on yes. camera. And they were like, yeah, no, I mean, if you want to <laughs> have your friend yell Henry V's once more into the breach speech. Yep. While waggling a cane at my decorations, you can. And they were like, great. We will spend ah eight minutes of our movie yeah. doing it. Jesus Christ. I feel like they had balloons in 1844. The whole speech. Yeah. He makes it through almost the entirety of St. Crispin's Day. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Henry V was talking about, though, right? In that play? Yeah, he was talking about fighting balloons. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. The French are the balloons of nations. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a metaphor. Yeah. Yeah, they are, though. So then we get Cratchit. He's also wandering through town all dejected and broody. He sees Jacob Marley's ghost in the reflection of one of the windows. Now all the ghosts, all the ghosts, <laughs> fucking show. Hey, sorry, we okay. forgot we were supposed to do a "you're an asshole" thing. Fuck, we did. Oh, a yeah, right. Because really the Grim Reaper shows up right after that, and they're just. Hey, yeah. sorry, we've been. We had to walk from the fast to here. <laughs> we've just been fucking <laughs> whew, jogging through time. It has actually taken us quite a while to get here. Can I get that porta potty key back? Because that's the only time machine that we have. Anyways, don't don't be a piece of shit or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 So was Jacob Marley like reassigned to future Tiny Tim now? Tiny Tim the sixth or whatever? And will he be hanging out with him a year from now? Yeah. yeah. And right, right. Yeah, no, those, th these are the fucking questions. So he runs away. He runs into Patrick Swayze trying <laughs> to the play scene. <laughs> okay. So yeah, but so he runs away and then I guess he's out in traffic and screw like so what they're going for here is that he almost gets hit by a car, but Scrooge pulls him out of the way, right? Scrooge saves his life. They don't have the stunt budget to actually make that happen. So what we see is Scrooge gently suggests that he moves up on to the curb and then a car drive nowhere near him 13 seconds later. Right? Yeah. But this is so that he can have the whole big like, but why did you save me? I've been very mean to you. And then, you, you you know, you have to have this moment where like, does the writer of this movie think it's okay to like watch your man die when you could prevent it if he's been mean to you? Right. <laughs> at best, at best, this writer's moral compass is, man, if I wasn't a Christian, I would let everyone rude to me die in yes. front of me. <laughs> But I am, so I don't, Petra. And she's like, you live your life, I live mine. <laughs> la, 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 la. She's licking a blade, by the way, in case you're oh, okay. all, all wondering right, what that noise was. No, I was curious. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so then they hear a voice behind him. They both think maybe it's a ghost, but it turns out that it's just Matthew, the homeless guy from before. And it turns out that the building that they just happen to be standing in front of is a big fucking church with the big fucking cross on it. Damn right you're at the right podcast. Fuck yeah. You got, Admit it. You guys were walking through this movie and you were like, Eli, I don't know that this is a Christian enough movie. And this thing yeah, came through. What did what? Like, you know, when she started citing Matthew 25, I was like, all right, all right. No, I'm in. I'm in. But yeah, no. And the the last third of it is what it took to convince me. So yeah. So then we, we learn that Matthew actually has a home. He just fakes being unhoused so that he can minister to the other homeless people. He's a pastor in the streets and a freak in the sheets. <laughs> Is this a thing that they do? Are I, there undercover pastors I don't think they're under... I know there are pastors who spend their time ministering to the homeless, which is the second worst thing you can do, but I don't think they do it in a bit. I don't right, think they yeah, do it as a character. Yeah, I, maybe I'm wrong, but... Sometimes God needs a clever ruse to spread the gospel, <laughs> apparently. Okay. You have Whatever. no idea how useful ha-ha is when it comes to saving <laughs> people's souls, apparently. Yes, but we learn at length here that Fucking Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. It's just so banal, right? We spend like five fucking minutes of this movie with the pastor guy going, you know what's awesome is sacrificing your son to pay off another person's debt, right? Pretty cool. Right? You know who I think is pretty Christmas cash money? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's. you ever see a teen youth pastor try and relate pop culture to yes, their sermon, right? right? They're like, you know... The only era I'm interested in, Taylor Swift, is this era that we're all about to enter together, an era 
of the Lord. Guitar guy. Right. <laughs> but so, yeah, but Matthew's got to go. He also has to help pack Bell's restaurant up. But just before he leaves, Cratch, it's like, hey, there's something about Bell that you guys should know. And then the scene ends. Suspense thickens, right? What is it about Bell? So, okay. So we cut to the diner. Everybody's packing everything up. They're like, isn't there anything we can do, Bell? And she says, all that's left to do is pray. And then they don't pray. I just want to point out they that they don't, don't pray. then pray. So the miracle can't be attributed to God here. Also, she already gave up. Also, the thing you could have done is paid for your food. That would have worked. <laughs> but she, she's already done with the diner. So like, yeah, oh, we could pray. But like, I, I shut it down. Yeah, so. I already. Can we talk it. about homeless Heath lady and the cheese? It's important <laughs> to me emotionally. Also, can we just mention that they they seem to think packing up a restaurant is wiping down stuff with a rag. That's all. They, yeah, they're cleaning Closing it so they can turn. leave. I guess. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Doing side. They're just doing roll ups. Oh shit. Yeah. We don't. We don't need this. this this is dumb. But yes, there's a cheese moment and I'm very excited. Yes. Okay. Yeah. She comes out and she's like, oh, who am I going to give all this cheese to? I'll give it to this homeless person, not the other ones. Right. And she's like, fuck yeah. And she will spend, hey, hey, podcast listener, look at me. Look at me. There's like 19 minutes left in this movie. This actress mimes eating cheese through the rest of <laughs> the totally film. Does. I spent the next 19 minutes being like, "What? show me the fucking cheese. What cheese did you get? Yeah, it's right, a box right, of yeah. mystery cheese. Just say what it is. No matter what is happening, any scene that we describe to you, you have to understand that if the camera pans in a certain direction, there is this same woman in the background just being like, <laughs> just <laughs> like he did a fucking <laughs> cheese tray. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> She's got to slow it down. Like you can eat it like an apple, but you know, just take little bites. It's yeah. Keep it classy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah. So, but Scrooge comes in and he's all, he's doing his bit again. He's pretending that he's angry and hateful and despises Christmas again. Bell says, don't tell me you've reverted to your old ways, but she wouldn't know about his old ways. Unless he, unless she'd read the fucking story anyway. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I missed a lot of this because I was just uh, thinking about cheese for a while. You were watching the, mm -hmm. you were criticizing Tilly's yep. cheese technique. Very angry about it. And then I heard it, it brought me out of my cheese stupor. The line, I've come to claim my sister said by <laughs> yes. Tim. And I was like, what the fuck did I miss just now? <laughs> How did they get to there? Well, that's right, everybody. The twist is that Tim and Bell the will they, won't they love interest throughout the movie are brother and sister. Yep. The ones that have stared longingly at a photo of each other throughout the entire fucking film are twins. Yes, is the fucking movie. Why would you set up having them almost fucking high school? Why would you do that? I don't know. So, but yeah, and he's like, but now I've, I've decided to forgive your mortgage and... Give you half my company. And and of course, she's like, well, you know, I can't even run a fucking restaurant. What in the world makes you think I'd be qualified you know, to have any input on your company? And he's just like gumption, just I guess just gumption probably or something like that. Yeah. Also, I just have to point out that when they announced that twist, Petra's like, oh, I like Star Wars. And they're like, Petra, shut the fuck up, okay? They, she totally does. <laughs> that's, yeah. She's like, obviously. who's your father, Darth Vader? She, I'm like, yeah, I just, that's where we stole our twist from, Petra. Are you happy now? You happy? Yeah. I'm you killed this guy. murder you now. Roast this <laughs> dumbass plot twist, Petra. Just roast it. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so then now everybody forgives Cratchit. The homeless lady offers some cheese, offers him some cheese. And he goes, what is this Limburger cheese? And everybody laughs like the end of a fucking Scooby Doo. Why would that two. diner have Limburger? It's so stupid. That's so dumb. That doesn't even make sense culinarily. <laughs> God damn it. But they, they do literally prepare for a freeze frame and it doesn't happen. It's fucking because they go. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, oh still, rolling, still rolling. Still rolling. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. We go back up. <laughs> There's also a great moment where Petra's like, wait a minute, he's your brother, so I could fuck him? Yeah, <laughs> good for I Petra. I love that Petra had an answer here. She was like, she's like, hey, movie, real quick, I'm going to have to explain this. They didn't fuck in high school. That's, <laughs> I don't know why we would have set that up. I'm going to fuck you now. You're not in love, like love. But love. I haven't been paid in four months and you're rich. So, you know, if you yeah. want, man, 
I can do that hand twist thing. And I promise you, Belle can't do that. She doesn't even know what, they, if you describe that to her, she's going to cry. So I'm just telling well, you. You mean like the fire starter? So, <laughs> all right. Well, there you go, yeah. Tim. <laughs> So then, and as they're all celebrating and sorting all of this out, Jacob Marley comes and sort of beckons Scrooge into the back room. And we're like, oh, he's just going to Batman away. But but he's not. He's not. Right? He disappears while they're chatting. And then they just go back to the apartment and he's there. Hey, man, did you leave? <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're like, why did you leave the party? I want him to go because you guys suck. Fuck. I spent this whole time expecting you guys to fuck. And now you're twins. Jesus. I want to be like, there's no reason for me to be. This lesson could have happened so much without me time traveling. Jacob Marley's just smoking in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Get fucking used to it, man. Yeah, right. Yes. Does anyone want to know about Christmas spirit? Fuck, you're all Christian. Ah. <laughs> he goes, uh, you know, soon I'll need to leave. And, and they're like, well, I feel like already would have been the time to leave, right? Because this now movie is just over. It's, there's nothing the left for the movie to say. At one point, Timothy's like, Mr. Scrooge, 50 times thank you. And I'm like, that's a stingy amount of thank yous. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. 50, 50 times going back in time. Love it. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so they're free, so uh, you could have given me as many as you wanted. But yeah, and then so, yeah. And, oh, he gives Bell the key that he had from his dream, I think. Or Oh, no, I guess that was the key he was going to lock his shop up with. When he disappeared? Bill, this is for a tiresome postscript to the movie. I would like you to perform it. I think it's the key to the time machine, though, right? Isn't, like, now she has a time machine available? I mean, there was no time no! machine in the film, so. No, it's the key to the stupid PS trunk. Well, it is, yeah, but it was the key. Yeah. There's the key ring that he had when he time traveled, yeah. Also, I like that he calls them womb mates the moment he sees mm -hmm, them. He's mm -hmm. like, oh. I don't feel like people hey, want nicknames. Tim and Bell, isn't it? If it isn't the womb mates. And I was like, that's weird. I think people who might have fucked their sister don't want that kind of nickname right away. Yeah, really? <laughs> yes. So, and just when you think you're out of it, she goes British again, does her British accent. They do a little more Shakespeare. Oh my God, why won't the movie end? <laughs> I was literally just yelling end at the screen at this point. I was like, movie's <laughs> over and it ends. And then the movie is over okay. and then it goes away. <laughs> she says, when shall we meet again? And he says from Macbeth, he says, when the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won, that's, don't the witches say that to each other? They sure do. How does that relate to, any, <laughs> like, they just, nothing, nothing. Okay. They know those four fucking Shakespeare quotes and they were going to use all four of them, God damn it. Exactly, yeah. So, name, a, name an infinitive of a common verb, to be or not to be. They're just like adding Shakespeare. For <laughs> Good question. So then, okay, so he teleports back to 1844. He realizes he's still got a cell phone. Apparently, you can send texts back in time, right? I didn't realize that they did that, but they do, right? He gets a text from her when he gets to 1844 saying, like, you know, some more Shakespeare shit. <laughs> so 1844 had signal? Yeah, no, it has signal. In London. He, le he left it on red for like 170 years or whatever. Yeah. Oh, Heath, are you Ebenezer Scrooge? You have to tell us too. <laughs> so, yeah, and then some random street urchin walks up and he's like, good evening, Gabna. And then Scrooge gives him the cell phone and presumably destroys the timeline, right? Fucks the future. Yeah, well, he's like, what's your name? And he's like, I'm William Gates, sir. How old? Bill Gates didn't invent the cell phone. And so wasn't fucking... alive in 1844. <laughs> what are they even going for there? So then he time, the kid time travels forward. Know. And then his dad left him a bunch of money that he used to buy <laughs> an existing and software. And yeah, it's all some software. Coming to yeah. Right. And then he stole some software and tried to cure polio to make up for it. Yeah. So, okay. So then the movie's still not fucking over. How is the can we stop? We can stop. I guess We're we the podcast. Could stop. Yeah, but we didn't. <laughs> we could just be. Come on, end credits. Morgan, end credits. So we got we show uh, we have Bell showing up to work at the firm. Uh, we have God fuck. We have Cratchit pretend that he's still evil, but no, he's not. He just he was just a bit. We learned that Petra runs the diner now. She's a half owner now. She got fucked on that because this diner is so far. <laughs> Underwater, she like got handed some debt. Oh yeah, right. Like, that's yeah, supposed that's to be like a, a real nice thing they did for her. Also, 
What does Bell the di- not that uh, people who serve food are not multi talented and capable of many fascinating things, but what does Bell the waitress do at this housing company she owns half of? No fucking clue. Fucking warm ups. Just walking Christmas around so stuff. How is the houses? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, but okay. So, but the purpose of this scene is that they found an old treasure chest downstairs from way back in 1844 that Ebenezer left a note on telling the two of them to open on New Year's Eve. Oh, God. And the key that he gave her unlocks it. Get it? Right? Yeah. Makes sense now. And so they start looking through the box. They pull out the crutch from the beginning, Tiny Tim's crutch. And they both say in unison, Tiny Tim's crutch. But they wouldn't know about they that. Weren't, they weren't watching the movie. We were. That was us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they have some more. Everyone needs a crutch just like Jesus. They, in fact, the movie's actual words are Jesus is the most wonderful crutch of all. <laughs> oh man, they should have gone with that for the post colonic. A missed opportunity. <laughs> okay. So according to the movie, you just need a quick surgery from 1844 and you don't need Jesus anymore. And then oh, you know, right. well, to be fair. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> just need some cocaine. <laughs> you don't need Jesus anymore. There's yeah. a Bible in there. Like the evangelism is so thick at the end of this film. It's almost like a it was Jesus the whole time plot twist there. If Jacob Marley had pulled off the chains and been like, much like my father taught me, oh, <laughs> best ending of the movie ever. So, yeah, so then they actually do the laugh freeze frame thing, the Scooby-Doo thing, but the movie's still not over. Because then we get a one year later title card, right? We get Scrooge arriving at home, and damn it if Timothy hasn't been teleported back to 1844 now. They thought they were going to get a trilogy. They thought they were going to get a sequel yes. to their sequel. Yes, they seem the to think fucking so. confidence. The fucking cojones, my friends. Okay, and it ends with Scrooge yelling Marley like he's mad that Jacob Marley pulled like a, a prank. To the moon, Marley. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does cut over to him and he goes, did I do that? Yeah, it's totally pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is happening? And then we get the credit. And I normally we don't talk a lot about the credits, but during the credits, they have these like photographs from the production that have a very, see, we had real cameras and lights and stuff. They have a very <laughs> that feel to them. There were two microphones on these cameras. Yes. We just didn't know how to use them. <laughs> but I will say, I, I'm sorry to deliver such disappointing news for Christmas. I double check and no, there is no sequel to this one. Yeah, we could make it. Yeah, well, that's true. We could. Yeah. It's- hey, and honestly, our viewership, there's a new Leap movie coming out almost exclusively because of our listeners. So I'm just yeah. saying, keep hoping and praying, people. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, Leap 3. And while that does it for our review of Mr. Scrooge to see you, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we wouldn't want our days to get all merry and bright. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah. It's time for you and I to travel back in time to next last weekend, where we, along with friend of the show, Michael Marshall, reviewed John Schneider's Rumble exclusive anti-PC Christmas movie, (laughs) Jingle Smells. Oh, get excited, folks. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 425 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon owners that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on the show and sharing it on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick for Jefferson Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Cork and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Bell and Tim started an OnlyFans called Womb Mates. <laughs> Scrooge carried a 2013 disease back to 1844 that ultimately killed millions. Bill Gates' fault. <laughs> William Gates had no fucking idea how to invent the magic square he'd been given, so he (laughs) burned it, in case it was a witch. Probably, yeah. (laughs) 
preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Wars are fought by adults, but they destroy childhoods. At Save the Children, we focus on what matters. Children in the U.S. and around the world are facing unspeakable hardships from war, poverty, and the climate crisis. This giving season, your gift will be matched five times to help more at-risk children. That means a gift of $5 will become $25. A gift of $10 will become $50. Donate now at savethechildren.org. Shopify helps you sell at every stage of your business. Like that, let's put it online and see what happens stage. And the site is live. That we opened a store and need a fast checkout stage. Thanks. You're all set. That count it up and ship it around the globe stage. This one's going to Thailand. And that, wait, did we just hit a million orders stage? Whatever your stage, businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for your $1 a month trial at shopify.com slash profits 23.